Just another day on the scald of summer night. I can This is Regent's Park, one of my favourite royal parks in London, and uh, it's named after Prince Regent, who was the son of the Mad King George III, you know, the stupid one out of Blackadder 3. It was first opened to the public in 1835 after Prince Regent had redeveloped all the area from Pall Mall all the way up through here and down towards Parliament Hill Fields. And you can actually see these were buildings over there. If you've ever read The Majors by John Fowles, he refers to those buildings right at the end of it. And they were actually built as a part of an intended palace that the palace never got done in the end, but they did retain the buildings there for his mates and buddies. It was quite a spendthrift was Prince Regent and his brother, the Grand Old Duke of York, he stands on top of that column down uh, by Pall Mall, where you can see buildings which are very similar to the buildings over there. After the dissolution of the monasteries, King Henry VIII commandeered these whole grounds and turned it into his hunting grounds. But my favourite thing about it is that it's perfect for feeding the squirrels. I've got my nuts and I know just the spot. Oh. You can use any nuts, but uh, I'm using ginkgo monkey nuts. Please give me another smile before we end up. I like these ones because they've got a little case and the squirrels look really cute when they sort of open them up. All right, fella. Easy. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa! I've left the bag unattended. That was an amateur schoolboy error. Scratched. These are those boundary markers that I was telling you about in the other video about Peter Pan's tombstones. They actually divide the edge of what used to be a parish boundary. It's SMB, South Marylebone, is that? And this one, I think that's the parish of Paddington. No, it's the parish of St Pancras. So this, this bit is called the Avenue Gardens, but there's lots of different parts of Regent's Park. Oh. Hi! Avenue Gardens, that's where we were just now. Big old park. Oh, it's, it's, it's massive. It's got a boating okay. lake, a football pitches. This is called the Broadwalk, and this tree is most definitely the most unhappy tree in the park. <laughs> Poor fellow, look, he looks so sad. Hast now forgotten the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? He looks angry. I think there's a spirit trapped inside it. If thou murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in its knotty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. <laughs> You're a bit of a freckled whelp hag born, not honoured with human shape, aren't you, Simon? <laughs> Imagine you came back tomorrow and you had a smile. <laughs> I like this little water fountain. When I used to walk my dog here, yeah. they had the little water bowl. The trick with this water fountain, as a lot of people don't know, I often see people struggling with, uh, with the water fountain here because uh, they don't know how to get the water to start. There's a little trick because there's a little, little light inside. So if you just put your finger inside, then out it pops and you're going to have a nice drink. Particularly nice with this bag of dog poo right next to your face. Very good. People are great, aren't they? I love people sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I used to play football here every Sunday. And we were here once and this guy showed up and said, can I play with you? And we went, yeah, all right. And he, he looked just like Woody Harrelson. So the whole of the game of football we were playing up until half time, I kept going, hey, Woody, Woody, pass us the ball. <laughs> it was right over there. At half time, he said to me, Jim, why do you keep sort of laughing and saying, hey, Woody, Woody? And I said, because well, you look like Woody Harrelson. And he went, no, God, I am Woody Harrelson. <laughs> and then for the next like, six weeks, Woody Harrelson showed up and we hung with him, man. That's right, that's how we roll. And because uh, <laughs> he was in some show at the West End. And then what do I see? He appears on the TV in some pro celebrity football match with Robbie Williams. Not, not only does he show up playing, but he scores the winning penalty at the end. Not so much as a mention for us, the people who taught him everything he knows. The real heroes, the real, the real players behind that penalty. Uh, exactly. I taught him how to. I taught shot. him how to kick the ball the outside of the boot. You know. Uh, no, no acknowledgement in the post-match interview, but he knows. Uh, he knows that we we welcomed him. Cheers, Woody. Oh, cheers. Sure. <laughs> they were great days. The Woody, the Woody years, we call them. There's the camels over there, and uh, sometimes you can even see the tiger, but uh, he's a bit shy, and then he wants payment. It's blackberry season. Look, if you don't mind picking blackberries, which a dog may have peed on, perfectly nice and free. Beautiful. Have you ever been to the open-air theatre? 
for in Regent's Park? Yeah. Well, you have, haven't you, Joe? Yeah. What did you see? Is it, it Macbeth? How you? now, you secret black and midnight <laughs> hags? What is it you do? <laughs> <laughs> they often show things like uh, Midsummer Night's Dream and Temp The Tempest by Shakespeare. Quite popular open air plays because they are full of spirits and uh, summery activity. Please give me another smile up before when I this part of the park was opened in 1932 by Queen Mary's. So it's called the Queen Mary Rose Garden. Originally, it was a botanical garden, which I think means that you're allowed to plant any type of species here, whereas in the rest of the park, you're only allowed to plant certain types of trees and plants which are native to Britain. Hello. <laughs> Hello. All right. There is the jungle border that's up the top there. That gets done sort of every summer, so it's there for six months. Um, there's 84 different rose beds here. We replace about 10 every year, um, so we get new varieties. You can really smell the roses, can't you? You can actually double delight. It smells like Turkish delight. <laughs> it looks like the one in uh, Alice in Wonderland that he paints, <laughs> like they're half painted red. I always like to come to Regent's Park to try and clear my head. My shrink actually told me I should do it at least once a week and switch off my telephone. Just me and my home. And when I was a kid, I used to think that fairies lived just down here at this waterfall. Hey, hi. Hi. Oh, you didn't see any fairies in there? When I was your age, I saw a couple of fairies running around in there, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I can really imagine nymphs and spirits hopping around on top of these rocks and down the waterfall. No wonder my shrink told me to come here when I told him I believed in fairies. It really does have something quite magical about it. I don't know if you've ever seen the film About a Boy, you know, where he kills the duck. He throws the bit of bread at the duck and it kills him. It was right in there with Hugh Grant. Oh, huge, right. huge grunt. Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometime a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears and sometime voices that if then I had waked after long sleep would make me sleep again. In 1867, the boating lake over there actually froze over and people used to go ice skating and walking across it. And apparently 40 people died. So don't go walking on frozen over boating lakes. In 1982, I remember this being in the news, this bandstand, because it was when uh, the IRA bombed it and a lot of people lost their lives, which is why you can see all these poppies and stuff down here. I have these weeping willows and my favorite tree. We lay my love and I beneath the weeping willow. Did you know, incidentally, that swans have black flesh underneath white feathers and therefore they're often used to represent hypocrisy in literature and art. They, yeah, they belong to the queen. This is where they filmed um, with Nell and I. It's one of the benches along here. I haven't, I haven't watched the film recently. Christ. Look at that. Apart from half a raw potato, it's the only solid to have passed my lips in the last 24 hours. <laughs> when you get to this bit towards the end of the Broadwalk, you can smell fish. And it's, uh, it's not because I haven't changed my underwear recently, although that may be the case. It's because this is where the penguins live. So that scene at the end of With Nell and I, that the wolves are here and he's just doing Hamlet. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my myrrh. And indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame the earth seems to me a sterile promontory. How infinite in faculties, how like an angel in apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. It's the final speech from With Nell and I. Have you seen that film? And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me, no, nor woman neither. Nor woman neither. It covered us a ring of a special cause.